Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a faulty Sony PlayStation. Um, it's faulty, as in, it's not reading discs. Now I'll give you a bit of background information when it comes to this PlayStation. Uh, this PlayStation is a day one PlayStation. My friend got this, the day it was released uh, here in the UK. So it's a, a 1000 series. Now the problem he has, He's replaced the optical pickup, basically laser, in this system, and it's still having issues uh, reading discs. So I thought what I'd do today uh, is we take a look at it uh, and see if we can fix that problem for him. So if we stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is with this PlayStation, um, it's nothing serious. Uh, it's just a, a pit my friend has fell in. Um, and it's not too difficult to, to remedy. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd make a video and show you um, how it's done uh, and why uh, this is happening. Um, but first I'll show you what the actual PlayStation is doing. Um, if I hold down the lid sense button, you can see it spins the disc up and it does actually get a focus lock um, but what it looks like it's failing to do uh, is reading the TOC uh, the table of contents uh, of the disc, I'll show you that again, I'll let go and press the and hopefully you can you can hear the, the optical pickup struggling as well um, now if I take the disc out I'll show you what the focus lock is um, when I press the lid sense button you'll see the laser lens go up a couple of times uh, and that's basically the optical pickup trying to get uh, a lock on the disc and you'll see that there you go one two so it's actually getting a lock whoops uh, it's actually getting a lock onto the disc um, it's just not reading the disc and then it gives up, it stops it. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the issue that it's having. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to whip uh, the lid off this thing uh, and show you why it's having these uh, issues. Let's get into this Sony PlayStation. As you can see, it's a 1000 series the very first model so yeah what we need to do is remove five screws there's one here there's one here there's one here there's one here and the final one is here remove those turn the PlayStation over and the top lid will just pop straight off as you can see I've got the top lid off uh, now before I continue I've got a little bit of a warning uh, if you're going to do this you need to be very careful of this here. Uh, this is the power board and you need to be especially careful for this area just here. Because uh, if you touch anything here, uh, it's good night Vienna. Uh, and trust me when I say it's good night Vienna. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna do this, uh, do it at your own risk. <laughs> Don't blame me if you get electrocuted. Anyway, let's get on to what this PlayStation uh, is having issues with um, maybe you've seen it already <laughs> um, but as you can see if you look at the laser optical pickup um, you'll see uh, this is not the optical pickup for this generation um, PlayStation now I've taken a look uh, at this optical pickup this is an E variant um, which came in the 9000 series um, PlayStations uh, and obviously this is a 1000 series um, they went from um, A to E uh, and then the final model was a BAM model so they go uh, they have a serial number their, their serial number is KSM 440 and then it goes A A M A B M A C M A D M A E M and the final model that's in the slims 
is the BAM. Uh, and this being a E variant, um, it was uh, made for a later generation Sony PlayStation. Now you can actually put one in here, uh, and it sometimes it works, sometimes it uh, it doesn't. Um, but this one works but it needs recalibrating and it's generally to do uh, with the focus uh, that needs recalibrating because like I said this is a, a little bit later than, than this board um, and I think the reason why we see this sometimes it doesn't happen all the time you know you may be one of the unlucky ones where you decide to upgrade the laser that's in these things um, because the first generation, the A and the B model, were atrocious. They were absolute garbage. Um, so what people do is, when they get the chance, they can put a, a different later revision in there. But if you do that, you can run into this issue. And this is what my friends run into, where uh, you need to recalibrate the focus. Um, because what Sony did is, when they got to the C model, they actually redesigned... Um, the optical block the first a and b models were completely made out of plastic uh, and they were atrocious they you get plastic rubbing on plastic and it just wears um and it doesn't matter how much you calibrate the laser to get it to read this again it was just out of whack and yeah they were total garbage then what sony did was they were getting into a lot of trouble they were starting to get a lot of class action lawsuits brought against them so they sat down and goes okay we need to you know we need to sort this problem out and what they did is they made the actual laser uh, where the diode sits actually out of metal. Um, they used nylon bushes instead of plastic uh, runners. But yeah, let's chat in and um, let's get on with this thing. So first thing I need to do before I do any sort of calibration um, is I need to clean the laser lens. There's no point in trying to calibrate a laser if it's dirty. So um, yeah, I'll get some IPA and a Q-tip. Uh, and just give that laser lens, a, laser lens a quick wipe. Now if we take a look at the actual portion of the board where the optical pickup uh, as ribbon fits into the PCB we can see there are three potentiometers. Now these are used to adjust the focus bias adjust, focus gain adjust and the last one is the tracking adjust now what I've done is I've drawn it out better on a big screen so I can show you what those potentiometers are here's the where the ribbon fits in um, this first one here the blue one is focus bias adjust this basically sets the height uh, of the optical lens uh, the second one is focus gain and the third the final one here uh, is called push pull uh, it's basically tracking so this controls the uh, side to side uh, movement of the optical pickup because uh, it can basically move in two planes you've got focus which is the up and down movement like this uh, and then you've got tracking which is the side to side movement like this um, and what we need to deal with is we don't have to worry about the, the track inside of things and what we have to worry about is the focus so we're going to be adjusting uh, these two potentiometers to get this thing to uh, read CDs again so yeah what I'll do is I'll get all set up uh, and then we'll get calibrating this thing again now to recalibrate the focus on this optical pickup the first thing I need to do is get those potentiometers to a point where it's starting to read a disc. Now what I've done, and I can show you better, um, on the image on my monitor, if we look at the potentiometers, what you can see is like a little notch uh, that sticks out a little bit um, and it allows you to visually see where they are. Now what I've done is I've set the potentiometers um, so we're at a, a starting point here like this um, now what I might find now is I put a disc in and it actually 
starts to read the disc. Um, now if it doesn't read the disc, what I'll do is this very top potentiometer, the focus bias adjust, what I'll do is I'll turn this just a little bit uh, and then I'll try again uh, and see if it reads the disc. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll turn it a little bit more um, until the point where it starts to read the disc because that's what I need to get to. I need to actually start the system to, to read a disc before I can fully calibrate it properly uh, using my scope. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll pop a disc in this now uh, and see if it's actually trying to read the disc. As you can see, I've got a PlayStation game in there. Now, I've gone for the game loaded. Now, the reason I've gone for this uh, is because this has audio tracks on it. Um, and that's the way you calibrate uh, one of these lasers. You need a, a disc uh, with audio tracks on it. Um, because you want the optical block to spin the disc at speed 1 uh, when you're doing your calibration. Um, when this thing spins up and goes faster that's actually speed 2 and it's reading data um, but you want it to be at speed 1 uh, when you calibrate uh, anything to do with the optical pickup. Um, as you can see it's actually read the table of content uh, which is a great sign so that tells me that there's nothing seriously wrong with the optical block and I know there's nothing wrong with it because I know the PlayStation that this optical block came out of it actually came out of a 9000 series um, and it was uh, working perfectly fine so yeah um, we're reading the table of contents so what I can do now is actually calibrate this now to make life easier I'm going to run some leads um, off the test points um, because obviously I can't probe and hold the lead at the same time uh, sorry hold the probe on the test point um, so yeah that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder some uh, flying leads off the test points now you shouldn't do this you should actually probe the actual point where you probe because um, you actually be adding some impedance um, by adding a wire there um, but yeah I'm going to do it like that so I can show you uh, better what I'm doing um, don't worry um, I'll show you in an annotation exactly what I'm doing um, and it will be a lot clearer so yeah what I'll do is I'll hook up those wires and then we can get on to calibrating the focus uh, on this optical block I've got those flying leads all up top the PlayStation is actually playing the audio tracks from loaded I'm on track 12 it's playing track 12 at the moment now the first thing I, I need to do is set the voltage for the focus gain and what I need to do uh, is as you can see I've hooked up my um, leads to the uh, focus gain test point and the ground point and you can't see that but I'll put annotations there so it's easier to follow now what I need to do is I need to adjust the focus gain potentiometer which is the very bottom one which is just here so I'll move the camera very bottom one just here like I said I put annotation so it's easier to follow now what I need to do is adjust that until I get a voltage of 1.8 volts so we're going down and I'm just in it just in it still going down Um, we're getting close. Going down, we're going down. And whoops, gone too far. Okay, there we go. That should do. 1.8 volts. That's creeping up a little bit, no, but now it's stabilizing. So yeah, that's the focus gain adjusted. Uh, what I need to do now um, is hook up my scope and we can sort out the focus bias. 
time to adjust the focus bias now. Um, bias is basically the actual focus in the laser beam um, onto the disc. Uh, setting the height of the actual optical lens. Um, as you can see, I'm hooked up to the eye pattern, test eye pattern. Um, so what I'm basically going to do here is I'm going to hunt for the sweet spot um, on the potentiometer. So I'm basically going to be turning it left to right like this. And um, what you'll see is as I turn it left, uh, the eye pattern will get worse. I'll bring it back to somewhere in the center and it will get better. Uh, if I went the opposite way, it would get worse again. Um, and then if I went back to the center, it would get better. So what I'm basically hunting for is the best possible signal on the eye pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my adjustment screwdriver in there and I'll show you on the scope. So if I turn it this way, you can see the, the eye pattern getting a lot worse. You can see how bad that is. Now if I go back the other way and it's getting better, uh, if I turn it the opposite way, you can see it getting worse again and I you may be able to hear the disc is struggling right now. So what I'm doing is I'm hunting for the best possible eye pattern I can get. Uh, that's worse. We'll go back the other way and it goes worse. So it's going to be somewhere about here. I would say there is the sweet spot. Um, and that's it. That's the uh, focus bias all dialed in. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an extra step that I do that you can actually dial this in even better. So yeah, if I set up, uh, I'll show you that as well. What I'm actually doing now is I'm probing the focus error output and you can see that on my scope now this time I'm in the 200 uh, sorry 20 millivolt range where before when I was looking at the eye pattern I was in the 200 millivolt range so I'm proper getting down there now to, to dial this in now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that focus bias again uh, sorry bias um, and what's going to happen there instead of it turning it a lot of amount to get it in the center to find that sweet spot what I'm going to do now is I'm turning it minute little tiny turns um, and what you'll see again is this will get worse um, and then it will get better and again I'm doing exactly the same thing I'm hunting for that uh, sweet spot where this looks nice and clean so what I'll do is I'll put my adjustment screwdriver on the focus and what I'm going to do is as you can see it's got worse I'm coming back oh look at how nice that looks now if I go the opposite way it goes bad again so again I'll go the opposite way there you go it gets worse again you can see it I go back and it gets really nicely cleaned up I'll go back the other way and it gets bad now I'm turning this my new turns as Dave Jones would say I'm turning it by a bee's dick <laughs> but as you can see look how clean that is now again I'll show you again I'll go the opposite way it starts to get worse go the opposite way it looks nice and clean keep going in that direction it gets worse again and I'll come into the sweet spot which is about there and look how nice and clean that signal is now and that's it we are done here that's the optical pickup uh, it's focus recalibrated um, what I want to do now is to hook, just hook up my multimeter I want to measure the um, focus gain again just make sure it's in that 1.8 volt uh, range uh, and if it is that's it we're done uh, this thing's uh, recalibrated and should be reading gain discs perfect what I've done is I've just hooked my multimeter up again just to check that focus gain is still 1.8 volts and as you can see 
Uh, it's still around the 1.8 volt range. So yeah, this PlayStation's laser, uh, as I did to focus, recalibrated. Uh, and it should be working pretty nice now. So what I'll do is I'll get all the wires off and uh, I'll pop a game in this thing and hopefully this time it boots and everything's okay. As you can see, I've removed all the flying leads. I've got Metal Gear Solid back in there. Now you may be going, hold on, this is an NTSC game and this is a PAL PlayStation. How do you work that one out? Uh, well, this uh, PlayStation has been mod chipped. And I know that because it was me that did it many, many, many years ago. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Let's uh, power on and see what we get. And we're getting a boot. And we've got spin up. And as you can see, we're booting the disc. And you can tell it's NTSC because I'm getting the mismatch with the camera being at 50 hertz and the TV being at 60 hertz so we're getting a bit of a flickering. But as you can see, the game uh, is booted up uh, perfectly fine. Switch my camera to focus. Um, what I'm going to have to do now, guys, is I'm going to have to mute uh, the uh, TV because otherwise I'll get a copyright strike. I've uh, got a copyright strike showing uh, Metal Gear Solid um, before. So uh, thanks, Konami, for that much appreciated um, but as you can see um, it's working perfectly fine the nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island yeah I have to mute it again but yeah that seems to be playing uh, game discs perfectly fine now uh, what I'll do is I'll leave this uh, to do a soak test what that basically means is I'll leave it for an hour just letting go through the menus and just let it loop and loop and loop uh, and I'll leave that for an hour uh, then come back see if it's still playing okay because what, what can happen is over time uh, when it starts to heat up those readjustments can drift um, but that's very rarely uh, that what happens um, so yeah I'll just leave this an hour let it go uh, and then come back uh, and see if it's still working perfectly fine but it seems okay at the moment so yeah I'll leave it an hour and then come back and wrap up the video
As you can see, we're all back together. I give it an hour's soak test and it was perfectly fine. Um, as you can see, I'm giving it the ultimate test now. I've got a CDR in there. So, uh, the Metal Gear Sog, let's shut the lid. Power on. Hopefully, uh, it plays CDR as well as well. And um, we're getting a boot, baby. <laughs> now, you may be asking, um, how do I do it for CDRs? It's exactly the same. Um, make a copy of your game that has a audio tracks, uh, and then you just do exactly the same. Um, what you might have to do is adjust the um, laser power, um, but that's not too difficult. I've got a video on YouTube showing you how to do that. But yeah, as you can see, it's also reading CDRs uh, perfectly fine. So yeah, that's what it was guys, uh, that focus needed readjusting. And as you can see, uh, it's working perfectly fine. Now I'm, I'm, I'm talking over the top of it because Hopefully I can hide the music, uh, and then I won't get a copyright strike. Um, but knowing Konami, they'll do it anyway. But as you can see, uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mute it, because I don't really want to uh, get a copyright strike. But yeah, it's working fine. So yeah, if you like the video guys, uh, please give it a big thumbs up like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one. We're the winner. <laughs> Legend. Catch you next time, guys.